Hey, what's going on guys? It's Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number 12, an introduction to signal processing, frequency-based EQ. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. All right guys, so we're about to cover three topics in this video, so let's go ahead and remember to take plenty of notes. Let's go ahead and start by titling your notes at the top of your page, Lesson 12 Video Notes, and go ahead and put three bullet points on your page around three to four lines apart, which is a good enough space for each topic. All right, bullet point one should read, what is EQing? Bullet point two, types of analog EQ. Bullet point three, general EQ setting reference. And that's it. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So just as a precursor, equalization is one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal and can be your best ally or your greatest enemy. So let's go ahead and ask, what is EQing? Well, EQing is a process of adjusting the balance between frequencies. Equalizers can strengthen by boosting or weaken by cutting specific frequency bands. Now you should always use an EQ to improve an already great sound. If the sound isn't good without EQ, then you might actually need to re-record it. Another very important thing to remember is that when you're EQing anything, whether you're boosting or cutting a frequency of anything, you're actually affecting what you hear more or less of in the other tracks in that mix. For example, if you have a boomy bass sound and you decide to cut some low frequencies out, then you'll notice in other instruments in that mix, other instruments might sound a little bit more tight or snappy like a snare drum or something. You'll notice that that is even more present since you cut out some frequencies out of the bass. It truly is an art to create a brilliant sound, especially when blending several different sounds to make a perfect mix. Let's go ahead and go over the types of analog EQs. Let's first go over parametric equalizers. Now parametric equalizers have one or more sections each, which implements a second order filter function. This involves three adjustments. Selection of the center frequency in hertz, adjustment of the Q which determines the sharpness of the bandwidth, and the level or gain control which determines how much those frequencies are actually either cut or boosted. Let's go ahead and take a look at graphic equalizers. Graphic equalizers also implement second order filter functions but it's in a more user-friendly manner. This equipment is based on a bank of filters covering the audio spectrum in up to 30 frequency bands. Each second order filter has a fixed center frequency and Q, but an adjustable level. The user can raise or lower each slider in order to visually approximate a graph of the intended frequency response. Now let's go ahead and go over some general EQ settings. Now this is solely going to be a reference point and not really a guide for every single mix. Octave 1, 20 hertz through 40 hertz, the center point of 32 hertz. Now, the description of this is, it's going to give you kind of this chest thump, a sub bass or a rumble or a thump. So what you're going to hear is an extremely low frequency. This is actually great for extremely low frequency instruments like kick drums, bass, organs, things like that that need a little bit more feel and power added. Now octave 2, 40 hertz to 80 hertz with a center point of 64 hertz, will have a very bassy, full, fat, round bass type of sound. Now the benefits for this are for any instruments that are low in frequency, like kick drums, basses, etc. that need more fullness. Now octave 3, 80 hertz through 160 hertz with a center point of 125 hertz, it's going to have again a full, fat, body, sound. Okay, it could also even sound a little bit boomy, but not overly boomy. Now, this is great for pianos, low strings, floor toms, snare drums, and even low male voices. Now, octave 4, 160 hertz to 320 hertz with a center point of 250 hertz. This is going to give you kind of a muddy or muffled type of sound. It's kind of undescribable, really. Now this is going to benefit anything that's in the mid-range uh, of, of frequencies, instruments including vocals, uh, some that might re require a little bit more of a natural feel uh, or sound to it. Now octave 5, 320 hertz through 640 hertz with a center point of 500 hertz will give you kind of like a horn-like or boxy type of sound. Now the benefit to this is that it will make things sound a little bit more transparent, kind of like a megaphone or TV effect. Octave 6, 640 hertz to 1.25 kilohertz, center point of 1 kilohertz. Now the way of describing this sound would be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more attack, 
a little bit more distortion, and a little bit nasally. Now the benefits of using this frequency around here is for distorted guitar, snares, or anything that needs a little bit more of an aggressive feel to it. Octave 7, 1.25 kilohertz to 2.5 kilohertz with a center point of 2 kilohertz will kind of sound a little bit more crunchy, a little gritty, even a little bit noisy or grainy. Now this is great for background instruments including synths, strings, and other instruments around those frequencies. Octave 8, 2.5 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz with a center point of 4 kilohertz. Now this is going to sound a little sharp, edgy, it's going to bring a little bit of presence and definition to your sound. Now this is great for lead vocals or soloing instruments. Octave 9, 5 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz with a center point of 8 kilohertz. Now this is going to make your sound sound a little bit more metallic, a little bit more brilliant, and also give it a little bit of sibilance to those vocals. The instruments that actually benefit from this would be cymbals, hi-hats, shakers, and snare bottoms. And finally, octave 10, 10 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz with a center point of 16 kilohertz. Now, this is going to sound bright, airy, open, and a little hissy. Now, this will benefit nearly all acoustic instruments. It creates a feeling of openness and can really bring acoustic instruments alive. Alright guys, that's all the lesson detail I have for you for right now, but of course there's plenty more videos coming along in the future, so look out for those. And remember to always try to find more information about your lessons online. And while you're online, don't forget to check out Music is My Oxygen for all the things that you care about in the world of music. And until next time, have fun, study hard, and keep your eyes on your goals. I'll catch you guys on the next video.